So yeah, according to just uh, gonna go to bed and we were doing some planning for the next few days and popped up in the phone, check a few headlines and saw that uh, the 2019 Miss USA had uh, just been reported that she has just taken her own life. And this is a topic that both of us have been wanting to talk about for a while, but um, I think I think maybe more so me um, for a couple of reasons. One being that I've worked in mushroom space with a lot of people who have either had family members who have taken their own life or have had suicidal thoughts or attempts themselves, and and also because it's been um, kind of part of my struggle in life having from a very early age thought uh, very sincerely about taking my own life um, and I don't know it was relevant we were talking about attorneys being some of the highest rates of suicide of any profession and, and this um, young woman was a, um, an attorney uh, but I guess like as, I, as we were kind of talking about doing this I got to wondering and I, and I think I've asked you this before, but I don't know if I ever have. Have you never thought about killing yourself? Like seriously thought about killing yourself? Mm -mm. It's uh, it's it's kind of like it's baffling to me that there are people out there that have not thought about killing themselves. It's been such a. I mean, the closest I ever had that feeling that like thought to where I really thought like maybe I don't know maybe I should just start over or something like you know that thought of like maybe mm -hmm. reset I'm, the program I'm not yeah meant to be here anymore um was when Theo was now almost five when he was I don't know if he was one yet. I don't think he was, no, he was like eight months old. And you were in Jamaica a lot, and I was here a lot alone with him and working multiple jobs, and I was so depressed. And I, yeah, I felt like, what is the point? I'm miserable. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just alone and miserable. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't, I felt just crazy, like, I just... Yeah, I mean, postpartum depression is a thing. I don't, you know, I don't know that that was necessarily, surely, just all the pressure of <clears throat> being alone, having a brand new baby, all the emotional, hormonal changes. Yeah, it was just impact. a lot of work and very little sleep. Mm, the sleep factor. I wasn't being sleeping. Huge. Which, I wonder if that's, you know, for attorneys, attorneys. Mm -hmm. work so much and sleep maybe less than a lot of other professions yeah I wasn't um, sleeping and it's like I wasn't having fun like no mm -hmm. fun there was mm -hmm. zero fun <laughs> for many 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 months mm -hmm. and not getting together with close friends just like trying to make things work every day just mm -hmm which was taking everything in me. So. It's kind of funny even like <clears throat> Hope being here with the snake that was it was one of the most it was one of my comfort tools as a teenager when I felt really hopeless. Uh, snakes have always been a somehow been a calming presence for me uh, and I didn't, I didn't think about that when I picked picked him up. Um, <clears throat> but it's been very apparent and having, like, having coping having healthy coping mechanisms for life's stresses are it's just so crucial for all of us no matter what we're in but you know a big a big thing that this this whole reading the article about her um, and you know it's too early to really know specifics on why she did it uh, she posted an Instagram picture like right before she she did it saying you know something like I hope this day brings you peace uh, and rest
test or something like that. And uh, I don't know, her being a beauty pageant winner, Miss America, you know, um, and a social justice attorney. She's a she's like a blogger for women's fashion. <clears throat> And just immediately, you know, my mind went to the pressures that women in particular feel around, you know, self-image and maintaining a, a certain whatever look, you know. And I got to think about you as we've been talking about in these videos, you know, mm -hmm. concerns about you falling into some of that expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know. Do yeah, want, I don't think you'd be better to speak to women about that than me for sure. Yeah, I feel like so for myself today, like I had a really, I don't know, the last week has felt pretty challenging for me. And like, I went to bed last night when I laid my head on the pillow, I just felt for the first time in a long time, like, I felt, like, my heart racing mm -hmm. and my body just felt so stiff and it was, like, painful and I just felt like I could not relax and I started, uh, it's like my body, I was trying to catch my breath, I felt like and just like wasn't catching and I woke up finally went to sleep and then I woke up this morning kind of feeling that way still and you know there's a whole bunch of reasons why I think I, I've been feeling this way but I don't know, today was really hard and I kind of got to a point this afternoon where I just felt like, man, I feel like I've been sad for like a week straight and like just been kind of really pushing through, just trying to give myself pep talks every day and this afternoon I just felt like this is not working, like I feel like I'm getting more sad, mm -hmm. like I feel like it's getting harder for me to give myself pep talk talks and I got to the point where like I couldn't I just was like I just don't feel like it anymore I just feel like being sad and that's like ugh, it's, it's such a crap feeling like it's better to just it it takes so much energy to pull myself out of this I'm just not gonna and so I thankfully had gotten to the Y, got the kids to the kids club, and I was just feeling a lot of mom guilt and just all these things compiled. It's just, it's just all these things is compiling. And I had this feeling like I want to reach out to somebody, but I'm really afraid. Like I felt like if I reach out to somebody and tell them that I'm feeling this way, they'll think I'm weak. Like, they'll think I'm not strong and then they won't rely on me anymore and they won't think. It, it's like really, it's old thought patterns. And I caught myself thinking it's really like, it's like right between the subconscious and the conscious. like like that place where you're like wait am I really thinking those thoughts is this real like I'm thinking that I can't reach out to people in my life that care about me because I think they're gonna think I'm weak and untrustworthy if I have hard times and I caught myself and I'm like you know what they're gonna, people will probably appreciate me being vulnerable and it will allow them to be vulnerable with me and give them 
permission to do the same thing. So I got really vulnerable. I felt very vulnerable. I felt like naked. And I got on our sanctuary discord chat and I just told our community how I was feeling, which is additionally, it's like another layer of hard because I'm like a, you know, I'm a leader in the community, a founder of it. So <clears throat> I felt like, you know, at first I was like, you can't, there's no way you can say anything to, you know, your church community as someone who's like, supposed to be strong all the time and then and then I thought you know what I'm just sick of that I'm sick of that perception and that norm that leaders have to be strong all the time and they're not allowed to be weak because that makes them all the way weak mm. and I'm like so I just said forget it like I'm forget all that I'm just gonna reach out and say like I'm feeling this way I would love some tips <laughs> like please give me your tips on getting out of a funk that is just really persisting so and honestly like right after I did that and I asked for help I felt a lot better like before I even got anybody responding I just felt like yeah like, I can ask for help. Like, there's... Mm. I can reach out to people. It was that feeling that really... One of the most depressing feelings I know of is feeling like I have no one to reach out to if I need to. Like, I'm alone. And as soon as I was able to get past that feeling of, like, I don't have anyone, and I realized I do have a lot of people and I showed myself that, and I, I just felt a lot better. It's like, it's almost like that's all I needed was to not feel alone, was just feel like a connection to Yeah, I mean, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm in the hole, I, you know, that's what it is, is I feel completely and utterly alone, and no matter how much I reach out, nobody's gonna be able to reach back, and, and you know, you know, I already, feel like a burden as it is and then if I reach out to people then I'm gonna feel like more of a burden you know um, but mm -hmm. God it's like I don't know and there's just like so many times that I have not had the energy to talk myself out of the negative thinking and you know you gotta wonder if can you look look up, look up her name more I want to just say her name when I, um, you know this this has been a conversation because I just recently have worked with someone who had a loved one who took their own life and I've worked with a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> Chesley Christ. Chesley Christ. Chelsea. Chesley. 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 Hmm. Christ, yeah. Um, worked with a lot of people who have had family members that have taken their own life and so many times those people did not reach out they didn't they didn't reach out before they did something to hurt themselves i just had a friend that i worked with in mushrooms quite a bit and i knew he was suicidal and he was doing pretty good for about a year and then he just kind of stopped reaching out and he was in california and i learned you know i reached out to him and he got halfway respond and then found out that he had taken his life and it's just like this is such a it's such a struggle that so many people deal with and one of the things that I've found in working in mushrooms is that so few people will actually talk about that they feel this way because they feel like they're the only ones that feel this way um, yeah and there's just so much there's so much pressure when I mean, you think about a woman like that it's been yeah I mean that's what I'm thinking like looking at her Instagram, it's just like, this is one of the main reasons I'm off social media is because mm -hmm. so much of it is so empty and it is so tricky. It's so tricky to like not get caught up in it. Well, like, that's, that's only, it's like <laughs> from somebody who's got like 350 followers. 
you know, this person gets like 32 and a half thousand likes every single picture. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're all pictures of her smiling, having fun, being silly. This is all in the last couple of weeks. And it's like, you know, not one of these posts is like, I'm struggling. Right. I'm having a hard time. This has been a hard day. Yeah. It's all like, everything's great. Look at me. Look at me here. So that's one of the things, again, that we've kind of talked about and what we really want to be a part of the videos that we create. It's just real stuff. Like, we're in our fucking bathrobe. This was a topic that came up and we thought it was good to take a minute and chat about it. The audio is not the best. The lighting is like not best. Courtney didn't do her makeup or her hair. Uh, I I, never. That's important. I really think that's, I really think that's important. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, there are people out there that are looking at other, obviously we're all looking to each other for inspiration and influence and validation. And it's, it's, God, we were talking about someone that we know that basically never doesn't even come out of the, doesn't even come out of their, their room basically without any lipstick and makeup on and how like it's just it's not it's not even conscious at this point it's just ingrained in so many people that this is what they do before they show themselves to anybody and yeah. it's such a burden I never even imagined was people carried, particularly yeah. women. You know? I don't think, like, I wonder how long it's going to take for their the whole concept of, like, beauty pageants and, you know, like, the things that make up a Miss USA. Mm. Like, I wonder how long that whole concept will fade away. It's crazy to me that it still exists, honestly. But it really it's like, is, but we also live in a of bubble. Of course it like, does, yeah, of course it does. I mean, look at the porn industry and how much, like, mm-hmm. hyper-sexualization without having real conversations around <clears throat> sexuality. Uh, so, yeah, of course, there's still pageants, but surely this, hopefully, this will ignite some conversation around that topic and, and around suicide. You know, it's... Yeah, suicide is... It's, um... It's just really crazy to think about. And I've never... I've never known anyone, like, I've never been close with anyone that's decided to take their life. But I've been very close with someone who's been, like, has had a family member that's mm. taken their life and just yeah I mean that really it rattles you like man there's so many thoughts like it's just there's there is not a more hopeless state I mean there's not a more hopeless state and having been in that in that space understanding very deeply why people make that choice I can just say that there's just not a more hopeless state and that the only maybe not the only but reaching out is so crucial so crucial to reach out to realize that we're not alone Mm -hmm. yeah and mushrooms can be a big help mushrooms sometimes I many many times actually many times for myself and for others I've seen where psilocybin was the only thing that showed somebody that there was some glimmer of hope some little bit of beauty mystery really in life that gave the, the person enough inspiration and motivation to keep going Uh, So, you know, just really recognizing the powerful tool that psilocybin is to reignite that kind of spark for life, or at least the the curiosity, the, the possibility that there is 
something worth continuing to wake up and explore and, and hope for the possibility of better. Mm -hmm. So like if someone's if someone's feeling suicidal, like should they just go buy some mushrooms mm. and eat them at home alone? No, no, not at all. That's not. I think so I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. that message. I'm glad you asked that because it's not the case. Um, you know, I've I have seen people who were deeply depressed take a low dose of mushrooms and feel even more deeply depressed. There was someone I've mentioned before from one of the early Sil7 uh, research trials who had a dark, depressing trip and took his own life uh, because he thought, you know, Sil7 won't say me nothing will. If he would have had ongoing support and if he would have done more consecutive dosing closer than I bet it would have saved his life because I have seen many many times people who take a low to moderate dose in a very depressed state and come out of it further depressed and further hopeless and saying well I'm just gonna fucking kill myself now because this didn't work but if you can just be with them and keep going and sometimes it takes a really big dose for them to get woken up to to the mystery, to the possibility of, you know, something greater. Uh, and I have, I have every time seen that turn the tide, but it is, like you say, it's the dosing is hugely important. The setting and the safety that they're in and the ongoing support that they have is hugely important. Uh, so no, don't just go take mushrooms if you're depressed and think that's gonna fix the problem. You really got to be working with somebody that knows, and we are out there, and many of us that are here helping people through similar experiences have had the same struggles ourselves. Uh, so you know, that's what we're. That's what sanctuary is all about. This is a community that's supporting each other. Um, you know, in a spiritual way through these challenging times. Uh, so you can reach out to Sanctuary with a P. Um, comment below. Just just reach out and talk to somebody. Just just talk to somebody. Seek help. There is there is a way out of the hole. But mm -hmm. it's usually not on your own. Yeah, and that was the community aspect of Sanctuary. It is. I mean, since we've been talking about forming, helping to build sanctuary, it's been community. Like, mm -hmm. it's been all about community. And, like, just as much, if not more, than about mushrooms and the sacrament of the Sacred Mushroom Church. Like I was just saying, like reaching out to the community today when I was feeling mm -hmm. really low, like, yeah, it, it totally shifted things. And, you know, people are consistently showing up for each other, which, you know, that's like what church is really all about, like being there for each other through not just the good times and the parties and the celebration, but also like equally, equally during the really hard times, the confusing times, so. It's crazy to me how many times I've been a support to people in really tough, dark places and been able to acknowledge that they're, you know, deserving of that support and and not felt deserving myself, you know. Depression's a head fuck, man. Like real serious depression is a is a serious head fuck. Um, it just convinces you that you are not worthy of the same thing that you would do for other people. 
that there's no way out. I think it's, it's, a, it's a head fuck. Uh, so. Yeah, and I would think that I don't, I don't know this, but I feel like I've heard this, um, and it makes sense to me that if you're really considering suicide, then uh, the concept of spirituality or like a god consciousness probably doesn't really mm -hmm. ring true or like isn't felt mm -hmm. I mean would you mm -hmm. say that's yeah I think that's yeah I think that's very true uh, for a lot of people I mean, I've always had some kind of concept of a higher power um, and I don't know that that's necessarily what's deterred the thing that's deterred me um, it's played a role but mm, a lot of people that have taken their own life or that I've known that have gotten really, really close to it uh, or maybe have attempted it, they weren't in any way able to see or to conceptualize anything kind of beyond this reality. Uh, and that's where the mystery, like this one of those recent people that, people that I worked with that was, was very suicidal. I was actually in a psych ward for a while recently uh, on Suicide Watch. It took basically, you know, a 20 gram dose um, for the, that person to get to that, holy shit, this reality is not all there is. There is more to existence than the hopelessness, the mundanity of waking up, eating, taking care of kids, trying to shower shit and go to sleep, mm -hmm. you know? And humans need to have some kind of hope in a mystery is the best way that I can, I can put it. In some, something that is bigger and more just vast beyond our comprehension because otherwise like what's the point if we're just you know animals that are forced to suffer you don't see the snake does not it doesn't suffer it's just it's just a snake it's just a thing that's doing its thing and if it's like starving or whatever like obviously it's going to suffer but it doesn't experience existential suffering like humans do mm -hmm. humans are the only animal that we know of that can self-reflect and say, holy shit, why am I here? I have no purpose. If I have no purpose, why am I here? And it can, it can just go down very quickly. It can become, you know, experiencing yourself as a drain on, on your family and friends and society. And, and I think that's kind of the route that a lot of people go in or that the pain is just too much to bear. Uh, so humans, we are spiritual creatures. We are conscious creatures, so we need to be able to experience higher consciousness, consciousness higher than ours, to inspire us towards greater, which means like continuing to fight the fucking fight, and continuing to like, try to bring our imagination into reality. So. You dropped like five f bombs in this video. <laughs> what are you doing there? Edit them I'm out. I'm sorry. You can do you want Do you want to say fuck one more time, or do you want to? I think I have um, used my expletives purposefully to the full extent of my desire. Cool. <laughs> so you're good. I'm fucking good. Okay. Now you're good. So, alright, well, I think that's about a wrap, but, um, if you are feeling, like, hopeless and that you don't have anyone to reach out to, 
you can reach out to us and I know like the suicide hotline is not always the most attractive option for well people, and when you say when you say us I think you mean like sanctuary right like being a part of that community yeah I mean not necessarily us as individuals right um, yeah thanks yeah. for clarifying I mean like community is really have the ability as a community and a spiritual community although that may be hard to really feel in your heart right now if you're feeling hopeless um, but that's what we it's what we exist for as a spiritual community and sanctuary is is that and yeah we have a lot of people we have a hundred members now and a lot of them found us in really really hard times in their life so yeah and spirituality doesn't have to be like dogmatic religion mm -hmm. you know uh, metaphysics quantum physics the invisible part of our being is what we're really focused on when we're talking about spirituality as a as a church uh, but if you don't reach out to sanctuary or whatever, just reach out to somebody. Like, there's always somebody that cares. There, I guarantee you there's somebody that cares about you. I guarantee it. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we're all... We're all connected. We need each other. We need you. So. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for watching. Love you.